cancer patient. I want my lawmakers to know that if we're going to really honestly eliminate cancer as a ma major health problem in Utah, the fight against the disease must be the top mind for our legislation. I know that it is. I know what it's like to work two full-time jobs and still struggle to pay for my health insurance and co-pays. I want to make sure my lawmakers know that the decisions that they're making impact my life, not to mention the life of my four kids. I have been forced to stop treatments for my lymphedema caused by my surgery and cut off chemotherapy and radiation because I simply cannot afford it. In closing, I urge my elected officials to agree upon spanning Medicaid. This would allow me to work only one job and be able to get the care I need and be able to raise my children and be able to see my kids. I would like to be able to get the treatments my doctor suggests when he suggests them and not wait four or five, six months. I don't want to look back and think, I wish I could have had the treatment I needed so I could live and ultimately give back to my society and my community. Thank you. I would hope that we we can look at least over the next three years where there'll be very little cost to the state and look at it as a giant experiment and take the money <laughs> and then if it doesn't work after three years uh, that may be one thing but it certainly will help Charlotte get through her situation so when I hear people speak about well, what will happen in three years when we have to pick up 10%? Or what if the federal government collapses? <laughs> Let's just deal with Charlotte. Let's just deal with the fact that we're paying this money. Let's take the money for three years, and then we'll deal with it. Charlotte, thank you, and the rest of you so much for coming. It's been a great appreciation. Thank you. Thanks, you guys. Let me just tell you one thing. It's easy to talk about policy when we're up here. And I want to thank you for putting a human face um, on, this, on this problem. Now, I will tell you that the governor has come up with his own policy in which he would like to go back to the government and to speak with the secretary and the president about acquiring for Utah what really is a full Medicaid expansion under a block grant. And so one of the things he's asked for us to do is to come up with something in the legislature that will do two things. One, it will not tie his hands, and number two, that will give him the back end of the legislature. Now in that regard, I'm, I'm just going to go over a little policy with you. As you all know, I sponsored SB 251, which is a partial Medicaid expansion. It goes along with the Health Care Reform Task Force. It was a pragmatic decision based on what? Well, we want to get something in response to a house plan that I felt was too reactionary and really was not a Medicaid expansion. And so it does address both, both fiscally as well as covers the coverage gap. So those 54,000 or plus Utahns who fall in that ironically created whole of the Affordable Care Act and then the Supreme Court decision, we have an obligation to do something appropriate for these, for all those people who, who are in that gap. Now. Tomorrow we're going to introduce an amendment to SB 251, which will in fact give the governor that go-ahead. And, and so I'll add that, that to the uh, 251. We'll take it to the Senate floor and hopefully, if we can persuade our colleagues in a bipartisan effort to give our, our, our weight behind the governor so that he can get in fact a full um, guarantee from the federal government so that we can bring those monies back to the state of Utah, but most importantly, so they can help all of those who de so desperately need this help. So thank you. thank you so much for coming. Senator, I haven't kept up with the amendment uh, that you just spoke of. Can you give us just a thumbnail about what will be introduced again tomorrow? Well, what we'll do is we'll introduce this amendment which will give the governor unfettered access to the federal funds that, that could be available and so that we won't say you can just go for a partial expansion or we'll just or other other qualifications but it will allow him to go back and negotiate President Obama personally and say we're able to deal to uh, present our state to go for a full expansion 
will you cooperate with us and under the guise of a, of a block grant then give us the independence to do a Utah plan and it will solve the, both of both worlds. It will get the federal dollars but it will give us some latitude in plan design here in the state of Utah. Section uh, that we were looking at very closely prior to this new development was the fact that uh, that there was a provision that allowed you know uh, private insurance to be involved. Select Health, a big player mm -hmm. here. Tell me more about how that's going to affect that. Was that the the real impetus behind creating a Utah plan instead of doing just what New Jersey or Arizona did? Well, I, I, I know that the governor has his own interests in this, and to prevent crowd out, and some of the issues have been big concerns for this legislature. I'm sure he wants to direct that to private insurance, and frankly, it gives the providers and the hospitals better reimbursement as well. And the, and the secret is to leverage federal dollars and use a wraparound so that the, the um, citizens of the state of Utah aren't faced with incredibly high deductibles that are they're not possible. In certain respects then, does this call the question on the matter? Well, let's hope that this, this does give us an opportunity to support the governor in, in his effort to go forth.